plan is um, Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and Sherlock Holmes TV. But before I uh, do that one, I want to do a, a guest preview cartoon borrowed from Radiskull and Devil Doll. It's gonna be live. I am the Radiskull, and I will kill you all. But why did you come call me? Devil Doll, is it boiling hot? Just how you like it. Ah, give to Radiskull. Was doing a cartoon at the beginning um, from somebody else. Uh, a good thing or a bad thing? Sound off in the comments. All right. As I said before, let's start this thing. It's gonna be live. Together, we shall create a harmonious community. 
that shares passions and a desire to elevate the human experience. Sebastian Saints to make him smile for the war. To the end of the line, my Valentine, guiding you on this journey towards a more serene and enlightened tomorrow. Catch you guys on the flip side. Begin by simply listening. Slow down. See just how peaceful today can be. Greetings, children. I am your obedient servant, Sebastian St. Smalls. The plan for this one is Sherlock Holmes TV, the one with Ronald Howard. And and it has Nigel Bruce. And Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, no need to li uh, wish us luck. Don't panic, mes amis. It's a fait accompli. Usually bras fit small chested women like this. Yappy, you guys, look at how much space that is. This was my life. Bra gaps, tons of shifting, not being able to bend over. Space, space. If you have heard that itty bitty titty committee step forward because I have a message for you, I just found the perfect bra. This is why I swear by Peppa bras. It took me 28 years to find a bra that fits my chest for literally 50 years. New movie. I consider every coin here to be suspect. These coins have already been cleared, Inspector. Hmm?
Thing that's different about a Gerber vacation home? You always have. between a sentence and the end of a rope, Mr. Holmes. I'll kill you before I die! I swear! Progress. Christmas. 
began the moment that man was out of sight. And yet this is Norton number six still believes it. Testimonial to his charm, Watson. Charm being the first requisite of every blue beard. Yes, good to see you. Was it three widows, two spinsters? <laughs> you really having the one we've all asked? Yes, and I would have if the star witness hadn't voted. Holmes, that threat he made against you. Oh, Watson, remind me to buy another A string, will you? Of course, I know it's all ridiculous, but why do you think he should indulge in such a bluff? Well, you know, the criminal mind travels in devious channels, Watson. Ah, but don't worry, old chap, because uh, if he sends me cyanide, I just won't take it. <laughs> well, let me play you a camel, Watson. Outside. What are you going to do? I'm going to Newgate Prison. We've taken every possible precaution, Mr. Holmes. For example, his food is served already cut. Bones removed on wooden dishes, wooden spools and forks. All the furniture is still is fastened down. Would you proceed to yourself if you wish? Thank you, I should like to. Thank you. 
believe Mint's new family plan is just $15 a month per person. So I've asked my wife and plan member to that. No, I just get it for that set of boring stuff. Okay, I'm announcing a family plan where just two lines gives everyone a $15 price. I'm literally revolutionizing. I should have thought of that fast. That's some of these things work. Can you please let me know I'm upset? Huh? There we are. Yeah. Very cute. I just still want to look nice. Of course. Go with it. continued to hang over our Baker Street flat for all that either of us could do to this fest. It was Christmas, but there was still the condemned man's threat. If Holmes didn't make light of it, I could ask. Merry Christmas, sir, and a very Merry Christmas to you! Oh, why? Well, I, I have some research work to do on uh, 
to be there already. Well, we can't be sure of that. You see, the chiefs are probably working on the theory that that's the last place on earth he'd go. I think you think he may be counting on it. All right, I'll get ready. I'm ready. Mr. Holmes. Don't move. Who do I get you, Mr. Holmes? Now they'll get me. But I don't care. I've had my revenge. Oh, you must leave this sort of thing to people who are more useful. Oh, I really must, you don't need to say that. Are you listening to me? 
The next time this sort of thing happens, I'm going to have you locked up for your own good. A very idea like that's so absolutely furious. Why, I, 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 I just don't know. But sometimes I think you could need a nurse. Someone passed him a hacksaw, and I want that man. It's up to you to find it. I'll keep you 24 hours, otherwise every god who's on duty that wing will be dismissed. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Find it! So for order. Benny's Holtz, founder and head chef of Senorita. Without being able to connect mobily with my customers on social media or through point of sales, we wouldn't be where we are today.
I shared a flat at 221B Baker Street with a young man named Sherlock Holmes. This would normally be a simple statement of simple fact, but I had learned in the first few weeks of our association that the normal process of returning home was in itself an adventure. I never knew what to expect. I seldom expected what I found. I had decided to spend a quiet evening at home, and I was determined not to become involved in any new scheme that Holmes would invent. tried to prove that no one could produce the deadly poisons without a trained chemist? No. Well, I'm going to try it now. With kitchen utensils and a secondary school chemistry book. I knew it could be done. There it is, Watson. <laughs> Brilliant. Now you've done it. me rather than the police. <laughs> of course. But my reason to see you actually concerns my elder brother, John. It is he who controls the family wealth. In the event of his death, I would be sold to him. Does his death seem imminent? His life has been threatened. In what way? I noticed you didn't ask by whom. You took pains to point out that only you would benefit by your brother's death. If you knew who made the threat, you wouldn't be so concerned with your own innocence. I do not know who's making these threats. Actually, I don't even know if it is or who. I beg your pardon, sir. Well, it is possibly a what, Dr. Watson. In this case, the heritage of every old family. The family legend. What is the Winthrop legend? Every member of the family destined for a violent death finds about his person silver coins. Silver coins? Oh, you mean like those silver coins the pirates use called pieces of eight? Exactly, Dr. Watson. Pieces of eight as a warning. And at a time of death, a gold or blue. Have these coins any special significance? Thirty years ago, my father was killed by a fall down the stairs in the main hall of Winthrop Manor. A gold doubloon was found under his body. Was he actually seen to fall downstairs? Uh, no. The manor was closed and has remained so ever since. I assume your brother has discovered several silver coins each day the past seven days. See, what has been his reaction? He has decided for the first time in 30 years to reopen Winthrop Manor. In defiance of the legend. Exactly. We are going to be there this weekend. Who is we? My brother, my fiancé and myself. And I would like you too, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, to be there as well. Well, that's very good of you, sir. Do you have any other evidence to substantiate your belief? Very young in those days. I still remember the sight of my father's body at the bottom of those stairs. 
Dr. Watson and I will arrive at Winthrop Manor this Friday night. Thank you very much. If there's anything I can do until then, or if there's any question you want to ask me before, please don't hesitate to call upon me at any time. We'll do that.
My wife thinks I'm a bit reckless. She worries about my neck. Lost, oh, my dear. That appears to be a preoccupation with more than one member of your family, sir. You mean my brother, too. And the reason for your being here. Not so. I said the same thing. And you agree with me. You, too, think it's a lot of rubbish. I don't think we're referring to the same thing, sir. I'm talking about the legend, of course. Ah, I see. May I ask, sir, what precautions you've taken against it? What would one do? How does one fight a myth? Well, what's your opinion, Mr. Holmes? Should I take this matter seriously? <laughs> you are obviously taking it seriously. By defying it. By coming down here to prove that it doesn't exist. by the supernatural. If we rule that out, then the threat has a very realistic source. In either case, the threat remains. Not me that way. But there are just the six of us here, Mr. Holmes. Surely if there is danger for John, it couldn't come from any of us. There are just the six of us now, Miss Hall. <laughs> John, what is it? Nothing, my dear, nothing at all. I think we'd better go into dinner. Excellent idea. small spaces. Just press firmly and it continuously fights odors in the air and on soft surfaces for 45 days. Winthrop was in love with Alice before she married his brother. Holmes, you're fantastic. How did you determine that? He told me. Oh. Oh, well, have you got a match, Watson? Yes, I think I should have. See how easy it was to plant those things on someone else? Well, really, Holmes, for all you know, I... Well, I... I'm...
Gold doubloon. We return to the case of the Winthrop legend. Had quite a time getting back here. The roads are turning bad. Um, Harvey Winthrop. Uh, good evening, sir. Could you get everybody together and see if we can try and get this thing sorted out? Uh, where's the body? Over there. Broken neck. Died instantly. What do you say? You up there? Uh oh, good evening, Constable. That is Mr. Phelps. I've spoken to you about him. Oh, yes. Good evening to you, Miss Jones. Glad to have you on this case. His wife. It's a terrible shock for her. Oh, Miss Jones. I'd like to discuss this case with you. I've got several theories. Dr. Watson is very I think it would be better if she retired for a while. These will help. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Watson summarized the alleged for me on the way down, but quite plainly, Miss Holmes, I would say we're opposed to a devilish mind here. Holmes, really? I don't know. What on earth do you think you're doing? <laughs> At the very least, the very least. Observe, Watson, I've almost torn a button loose. Well, so I should think after all those acrobatics. Are you going to sit like that all evening? And yet the late Mr. John Winthrop fell down a long flight of exceptionally sharp stone stairs without damaging his clothing. What's that? I made a check. Yes, I think you had. He may not have torn a button, but he suffered some very severe damage to his neck, I'd like to remind you. An indisputable fact, my dear Watson. Well, what are you getting at, though? Right. Now we're getting somewhere. Come on, Watson, let's examine the situation more thoroughly. The killing blow was struck at the back of the neck, is that right? It was. He must have struck the edge of the stair as he fell. Stone. Edge is quite sharp. The wound be deeper, more pronounced, Watson. Would you re-examine the injuries, like a good fellow? Mm-hmm. Skin's broken, but not unusually so. Still, it's difficult to know the position of the body when he fell. I agree with Miss Jones. Winthrop and the blind woman were at the top of the stairs when he fell. Mm -hmm. And in a position to have pushed him down. Right. He was then implied that Miss Hall, being downstairs all the time, may be ruled out as a suspect. Well, I should take that as a prima facie proof of her innocence. You really think so, Watson? What's that? Who are you accusing, Mr. Holmes? Your fiance. Holmes? You're insane. Not at all, I assure you. Your brother didn't fall down these stairs. He was killed, struck by a blow from behind. Very probably in this room. His body was then placed at the foot of the stairs, and the legend having been carefully reawakened, and the manner in which your father met his death and the gold doubloon, all led you to the obvious conclusion. She couldn't have done it. I assure you, she could. But how she had no motive. His fate now passes to Harvey Winthrop. Well, yes, I'm the only one who had a motive. Why? I would say you and the lady you are going to marry. Are you going to report her to the police? Less than useless, I'm afraid. No court in this world would ever convict us on the evidence we have. Well, assuming you're right, and mind you, to me, it's only an assumption. There's nothing we can do. Yes, there is. We can at least remove the assumption. Come with me, gentlemen, into the drawing room.
comfortable. I didn't know you were there. Just looking around routine there, Miss. Of course. Do you want to see me? Not especially, Miss. There are a few more things to check up on. The rest lies completely in your hands. Oh, this whole thing is horrible. If you'll forgive us, Dr. Watson has a medical certificate to fill out. Yes, I shall attend to that. Oh, Miss Rams, at your service, my good constable. That's Holmes. What a peculiar man. What? So Holmes, yes, he is indeed. I think I am. Um... Yes? Well, this is difficult to say. Stop it, In light of what's happened, I think it's best we break off our engagement. Break off? But why? Well, there's certain to be a mess in the papers about all this. Well, you needn't worry about me, darling. Actually, it's Alice I'm thinking of. Alice? Yes, she'll be so terribly alone now. In a way, I feel responsible for her. You love her. You've always loved her. And now that your brother's dead, you... You mustn't think that. There's something else. What else? What is this sudden protective fatherly interest? Ten years ago, Alice and I went riding across the moor. I started a race. My horse broke away from her and... she could stop him. He took a high fence and fell. And Alice became blind. But you can't live with that for the rest of your life. It was an accident. Unfortunate. But it shouldn't influence our relationship now. I'm afraid it does. To me. John dies, and you take Alice. That's funny. That's really ironic. Ironic? What do you see ironic in such a situation? I don't know. I just meant... Nothing. Just an expression. choice of words, I might add. Alas, I must confess we were eavesdropping. Is there anything you'd like to confess, Miss Hall? What does this mean? You spoke of irony. Such a choice word. You didn't kill John Winthrop so that Harvey could share the family fortune with Alice. You'd have seen to that in time. You're insane. I couldn't have pushed John down the stairs. I was at the bottom myself. We were in a perfect position to strike him with it. And then, very thoughtfully, placed the end in the fire to remove any evidence of the blow. No court in the world would convict me on evidence like that. You're quite right, Miss Hall. But you know the facts. And we know the facts. Surely, Holmes, something can be done? I don't think so, Watson. The young lady used her wits. An ancient legend. And a murderess walks free. a gold to blue. She said no court in the world would ever convict her.
warmth hey, and gaiety of a successful party. I'm doing a Sherlock Holmes marathon. Do you want to listen with us? The anticipation of new and interesting okay. people to meet. These are the elements of an enjoyable evening. Uh, These are often I forget. Memorable occasions in life. I don't, I don't remember. Hey, you have to, uh, pick you up the phone, my phone. I don't know. Joyous, festive. This is a story of a party that ended with fear okay. and horror. It was a cry for help. Sherlock Holmes will never forget. It's a lovely party. Wonderful party, Janet. Good night, Russell. No one deserves happiness more than you and Russell. Thank you, John. Good night. Wish that John was just one half of the candidate as Russell. You ever want to get rid of him, send him to me. <laughs> Good night, Louisa. Good night. Good night. I love them all. But is it unkind of me to say that I'm glad you're finally in love? Not unkind at all. Just leave everything to tomorrow, Susan. Good night. Good night. I really am the luckiest woman in the whole world. Our first anniversary. I wanted you to be happy this year. Couldn't be any other way with you. It might have been. <laughs> there may be a deep and dark side to my nature. Of course there is, darling. All interesting men have dark sides to their nature. Possibly even black. Oh, certainly black. I'm a murderer. Of course you are. More than one. Innumerable times, I'm sure. Seven. And are you going to make it seven times again? One again. Anyone I know? You. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and will you give me warning? I'm giving you warning. Will you kill me with... <laughs> I told you, my darling. Tomorrow, at exactly nine o'clock, I will strangle you as I have strangled seven before. You're serious? About the art of murder, I am always serious. <laughs> I've used it as it suited my convenience. Death is my only true friend. Don't talk like that. You don't believe me now, my dear. But you'll think about it. You'll come to know and to fear. Then you'll fly to the police and tell them what has happened. They may believe you. <laughs> and tomorrow, at exactly nine o'clock, I will kill you. You tell us the whole story as it happened. It might be easier that way. Of course. I'm Mrs. Russell's partner. Your husband's the art collector? That's right. Oh, like a wonderful man, your husband. I first had the pleasure of meeting him when we were guarding the French collection that came over. He's a wonderful man. Everyone says that. Now, tell me what's troubling you, Mrs. Partridge. 
You can rest assured that for your own sake as well as your husband's, Scotland Yard will do everything it possibly can. Nothing. Nothing. I was mistaken. I can see it now. Probably the result of too much party last night and an overactive imagination. Oh, perhaps you care to tell me about it anyway. It may help to dispel any doubts you have. It isn't necessary, really. I I'm sorry to have taken so much of your time, Inspector. I'm sure you are a very busy man. Mrs. Partridge, I'm very pleased to hear you feel this way now. What do you mean? Your husband told me of the incident last night. He was afraid you wouldn't be able to overcome the delusion. My husband told you? What? Yes, he was here this morning. What did he tell you? Only that you were suddenly overcome by the idea that he intended to harm you. You're over that now, I see. My husband told you that. May I say, Mrs. Partridge, that in my experience here at Scotland Yard, I've met many people who thought for a short time that they were being persecuted. But it passes. Your husband will help you, I'm sure. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. Well, what do you make of that, sir? Follow us. Just gone downstairs. Mr. Won't you please come in? Thank you. Oh, please excuse me. I oh, would you mind sit over here? Yeah. Uh, uh, would, would, would you care for anything? I, I have some fresh tea made. No, sir. You say Mr. Holmes will be right there. Oh, yes. Oh, oh forgive me. I'm I'm Dr. Watt. How do you do? I'm Mrs. Russell Partridge. Oh, you're your husband, the art collector? Yes. Oh, I, I met him not long ago. Wonderful man. <laughs> of course, I'm not much an authority on art myself. I just like what I like, you know. But I understand he's one of our leading judges. Yes, that's true. <laughs> what wonderful man. He's interesting, too. Yes. I think perhaps I'd better leave. I was wrong to think that... What a beautiful day, Watson. Perfectly exquisite. We really must make an effort to get out and about more often. And see the beauties that I... I beg your pardon, madam. I didn't realize we had a guest. May I present Mr. Holmes to his little rascal cartridge? Do forgive the exuberance of my entrance, madam. I'm delighted to meet you once you sit down. I think that... I realize the situation was a delicate one. How do you know? Because uh, you didn't wish it to be known that you'd come here. So you left your carriage at the corner of the street and walked. You saw me? No, no, as a matter of fact, I didn't. But I observed that the hem of your skirt has picked up a certain amount of dust from the street. And though you undoubtedly came by carriage, because your shoes, which are extremely fashionable ones, were not meant for comfortable walking. <laughs> I need your help. In what way, Mrs. Rush? I believe my husband is going to kill me. Russell Partridge? Why do you believe this, Mrs. Partridge? He told me he would. Last night. Why, that's impossible. I had the same reaction at first, Dr. Watson. It couldn't be true. Not by Russell. As everyone tells me, he's such a wonderful man. When did he say he was going to do this? Tonight, at nine. And then he said... He said something impossible, Mr. Holmes. He said I would be the end. Excuse me. Hello, 
Actually, Mr. Partridge, the yard will assume responsibility for putting things back as they were. Thank you, Inspector. I, I, I do hope you'll forgive us bursting in like this. It's uh, Mr. Holmes who... I understand Mr. Holmes very well. I suppose I'd feel the same way under the circumstances. Two minutes after seven. Five minutes since you last asked me. It's there, Watson. It's there. I'll swear it's there. What's there? The evidence that Mrs. Party didn't write. But her husband is a murderer. It's in that house somewhere. I'll swear it. But you searched all over the house, Holmes. You've measured every inch of it. I know, Watson, but it is there. I've overlooked something. And unless I can find out what it is, that girl is going to be murdered in two hours. He said nine o'clock. Even if he intends to murder the girl, he doesn't have to do it on schedule. But he does. That's part of his disease. That man works like a clock. He tempts the police by having the victim report the murder in advance. And then he has to complete his game by murdering on the moment. The exact moment. Now where are you going? Out. That I can see, but where? For a walk. We believe we searched every inch of that house. Now I've got to find the one place that I missed. Life. You're insane, Ruffin, but I don't believe you're dangerous. I shall stay here tonight and leave in the morning. I'm glad you feel like that, Janet. It shows you have great strength of character. Where did you kill your other seven victims? Here, in this house. How did you dispose of their bodies? The bodies are still here. But the police searched the house. I know. I watched them. Very efficient. Especially with Mr. Holmes to guide them. A very clever man, Mr. Holmes. It was a tremendous temptation not to tell him where to look. Quarter to nine. You have 15 minutes. Why don't you run away? Very well done indeed, Mrs. Partridge. I must apologize for the oversight. What do we do now? Now we wait.
Mitchell. The one place I forgot to look. I get to step outside now. And I want you to count up to ten, go to the head of the stairs, and then start slowly down. Will you do that for me? I'll try. Don't worry. I'll be there. Ten seconds, remember? your revelation of yourself. So am I. I'm sure it is not against the law of England to walk up the stairs in one's own house. Besides, my wife is completely unharmed. And the other seven, Mr. Partridge? What other seven, Mr. Holmes? You searched this afternoon. The other seven exist in my poor wife. Sick in that <coughs> Yes, my I know where they are now. What's happened? Get the poker. Ah, what's it? Poker. Okay. Yes, the poker. coffin, Mr. Partridge. And if not, Dr. Watson here is more than capable of breaking it open. to the most insane killer I have ever met.
News and times. Um, says here some American claims to found a cure for the common cold. That nonsense, I don't believe it. Thunderbolt won the Aspinall Stakes. Hmm, six to one. Perhaps we made a killing on that. Oh, was there another one last night? Eh? The thistle killer. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, he strangled a girl last night at Ingram Square. Left the usual sign, thistle. Found that the maniac. Perhaps he is worse. But there may be a definite pattern behind all these killings. You think so? Look at that map, Wilkins. From one end of London to the other. He's got something on his mind, sir. Oh, you really think so, Wilkin? Hardly got something on his mind, you idiot. He's got a killing on his mind. Where's the war gonna end? I've looked up the statistics, sir. There are approximately 459,000 young women in London between the ages of 16 and 25. That's a comforting thought, Wilkin. I thought so. From the superintendent. Perhaps you'll be interested in your optimistic statistics, Wilkin. Too hard these days, I hope. Well, sir, I'm used to hard work. Then give me a sample of it. Stop these wholesale murders. 
six women in Australia, six successive nights. A man's made in a channel house of London. What's the author about? Well, we have men in duty all over London, now. Well, how does he slip by them? How does he get away? Sir, it's almost impossible to cover a city the size of London. And you strike again tonight. Sir, there are 459,000 young women in London between the ages of 16 and 25. I don't care if they're 459 million. Stop it! Orton Lane. Harris Street. Ovington Court. Napier Street. Evans Lane. And Ingram Square last night. Where would it be tonight? Sir, it's the whole of London to pick from. It's almost impossible to anticipate them. He doesn't choose his places. The haphazard. You know, there's nothing haphazard about this man, Watson. He's choosing each locality with a plan. What plan? Well, that's our problem. Why did he drop this one from his victim? Why three? I think they're symbols, Watson. Just as his killings are symbolic. Who's in your I don't. Well, there's another motive. I think that's planned, but I don't know. I think we know all the facts. We only have to read them properly. Well, sir, he knew each of these girls. That's the link. That's what I'm working on. How do you know that, Miss Jane? We issued a warning to young girls not to speak to strangers, to scream or to run as soon as they were accosted. Yet not one of them has done either. In fact, in three of the killings, footsteps show that they walked beside him, that they knew him, that they trusted him. And the girl last night had accepted the caramel for him. Yes, sir, and of course a young lady will never accept a sweet for the stranger. Then find the man they all know in common. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, Lestrade. Yes, sir. There's a chap named Sherlock Holmes. Ever run into him? Holmes, sir? Sherlock Holmes? Yes, yes, the name is familiar, sir. Yeah, yes, I have run into him on occasion. The deuces thing, they tell me. Yep. Hmm, you might call him in. Unofficially, of course. He's an amateur, sir. An amateur can't do worse than work. Yes. Evans Lane, Napier Street, Ingram Square. 
I take it this is the sequence of the killings, Miss Jane. Yes, I've tackled it from every angle. Concentric circles, triangles, squares, north, south, east, and west. But there's no pattern for these killings, Oh, well, but there is, Miss Jane, there is. But he's challenging Scotland Yard to catch him. Challengers? Yes, he's playing a game with you. What do you mean, playing a game? A cross-six. Look. Now, take the names in sequence. Beginning with the first letter of each neighborhood. P for Portland Lane, H for Harris Street. P, H, and so on. O, E, N, I, and what's the last letter? Why, the only one that fits, of course. X, and so you have Phoenix. Phoenix! The legendary bird that rose from his own ashes, symbol of immortality. Oh, I know he's a maniac. Him and his thistles, all three of them. Thistles the national flower of Scotland, the trade. You should know that. And there are three feet in a yard. Scotland Yard! Well, it shouldn't be hard to deduce where he plans to strike tonight. The last letter is X. Exenia Lane leading into Xerxes Park. Here. Then we have him. It would appear so, wouldn't it? Xerxes Park, Superintendent. It must be Xerxes Park. But there are other places that begin with the letter X, Mr. Holmes. Very few, and they're too frequented. Xerxes Park is small, quiet, and practically deserted at night. That's just what he wants. All right, Xerxes Park, then. The strayed of your dress. Without men all around the park. We'll cut off the entire area. But keep the park entrances open, Superintendent. Invite him in, you mean? But if you keep him out, you won't catch him. Good thought, Mr. Holmes. There are only two entrances to Xerxes Park, a gate here and here. We'll cover them both. Get him coming or going, eh? Either way. No, coming, not going. Oh, I see what you mean. But supposing there is no young woman from Turkey Park? Well, there will be. How do you know? Let's put one there for you. Decoy, huh? Oh, that be risky. Ever done any amateur theatricals, Mr. Strange? Hmm? What? Oh, I think we'll need uh, Inspector Lestrade at one end of the park, Superintendent. Now, as for the woman... <laughs> no. One of our police matrons might volunteer. But explain the risk fully to her, the state. Well, armor too, sir, just in case. I'm not sure a gun will be enough to strain. We could arrange a signal with her so she could let us know the moment she's accosted. Excellent, Watson. As soon as we get the signal, we can close in on you. Mm -hmm. All right, Lestrade. Pick the best men we have. Yes, sir. You want Lestrade at one end of Xerxes Park, but who'll be at the other end? Why, Dr. Watson and I, of course. That's a very good idea. Thank you very much. I wish there wasn't this fog. Mm. I'm covered it with this, Miss Curley. But don't take any chances. I'll be at that end of the park, and Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson will be at that end. Ah, Holmes, Dr. Watson. This is our decoy, Miss Colley. How do you do? Good evening, Miss Colley. Oh, well, what have we got here? Begin by simply listening. A sending so key, eh? Just how peaceful today can be. Yes, it's a telegraph set so going to both by. entrances. Catch you guys mm -hmm. on Quite the Quite ingenious, my dear fellow. But tell me, what are your signals? One short click if a man approaches Miss Colley. If he speaks to her, she keeps her finger pressed on the key. If he just passes on his way without speaking, then two short clicks. Show Mr. Holmes how it's done, Miss Colley. What can you do? 
when you need to sound like yourself, but warmer and more concise. When you're brainstorming a big idea or chasing your next great opportunity. And the conclusion we look forward to. We look forward to partnering with you. That's really good. With Grammarly Go, you can do it all. Grammarly Go is a groundbreaking AI assistant with unprecedented power to help you sound more like you. Grammarly Go understands your context, your voice, community is at the core of my business, and your style. Then takes whatever's on the tip of your tongue and turns it into something more. Thank you so much. What do you think? Amazing. So what can you do with Grammarly Go at your fingertips? Nice. You can find your flow and every word you are looking for. You can write thoughtful emails in less time. Come on, Daddy, let's go. You can get it exactly right, no matter what it is. We look forward to being your partner on the road. Great work. You can spend more time on what's important. With Grammarly Go, you can do anything. The better question is, what will you do? With more time, with a stronger voice, with a bigger impact. Click the blue button to download Grammarly Go today. You'll be amazed at what you can do.